Mr Justin Field. Mr President, tonight I rise to acknowledge the work and achievements of my colleague and friend, uh, Jeremy Buckingham. In the event that Jeremy is no longer a Member of Parliament after the March 2019 state election, I wanted to join with my colleagues Kate Fairman, who will speak next, and Dawn Walker, who gave her valedictory earlier today, in acknowledging Jeremy's contribution to the New South Wales Parliament, to politics in New South Wales, to the environment, to our climate, our rivers, to farming and to the wider Greens movement. I worked for Jeremy from his election in 2011 until early 2013. It was about 18 months. It felt like a lot longer than that. I don't think I've ever worked as hard over that period. We all did, and it was the start of something quite special. Jeremy started his term just as the people of New South Wales began to learn of the extent of coal seam gas exploration plans in this state. The majority of the state, from the Shoalhaven in the south, the entire Sydney basin, across the Western Division, all the way to the Queensland border, was covered in coal exploration licences. The Lock the Gate movement was just kicking off in Queensland, and Jeremy's office quickly became the de facto Lock the Gate campaign office in New South Wales in its early days, working hand in hand with Drew Hutton and frackman Dane Pratsky and others to get the message out to farmers and to communities. The coal seam gas inquiry that Jeremy negotiated with the shooters and Labor was a critical turning point. Jeremy's interrogation of the industry and work to ensure communities across the state had a voice in that inquiry shone a light on the substantial risks, the risks to our water, the risks to our air, the risks to communities, the risks to our climate presented by this industry. Many will have heard of Jeremy's frack finding tour to the United States. The Buckingham team travelled with Lock the Gate President Drew Hutton as well as landholders and campaigners Kim and Peter Martin across the US to learn firsthand about the impact of fracking. The experience was a pivotal moment in the campaign for New South Wales. The lessons Jeremy brought back to this state, the stories of farmers like John Fenton in Wyoming, the former mayor of Dish in Texas, the campaigners across Pennsylvania gave Jeremy and the campaign a credibility in this place and in the media that was unmatched by any others in politics. And that was his strength, to go and see, to hear, to share stories. He is a storyteller. And it is a wonderful sight to see him in story mode. It is motivating and he is powerfully effective. That trip was noticed by many in the community and in this place. And I remember uh, Duncan Gay carrying around a folder for a long time with the logo uh, Max Phillips created for the trip to the US with Jeremy in his cowboy hat behind the wheel. And I'm reliably informed by Dr. Peter Phelps. It is a 1972 Ford Country Squire. I don't know how I forgot. I remember Duncan Gay, in answer to a question in this place, he went in through a detailed extrapolation of how he calculated the carbon emissions from that trip to the United States, if we were indeed driving that very vehicle. Mr President, I seek leave to table um, this image. Is, is, uh, is there, object, there being no objection of the Thank honourable you, member? President. Please note that the document is being tabled and not being incorporated into Hansard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr President. Jeremy has done politics hard and fast. His tactics have been raw, they've been brutally honest, but no one can doubt his effectiveness as a campaigner. Few will forget him lighting the Condamine River on fire or his Steve Irwin style crikey as he almost fell off his kayak. I am convinced that without Jeremy Buckingham in the New South Wales Parliament over the last eight years, New South Wales would likely have seen coal seam gas wells dotted across this state. And Duncan Gay, if you are listening tonight, you can be sure that Jeremy has saved many, many, many more carbon emissions than he ever spent travelling around this state and the world talking to people about the impacts of this industry. Jeremy's contribution is not to take away from the work of communities across the state, from Bentley and the Northern Rivers to Gurley, the Pilliga, Gloucester, Fullerton Cove, Camden, Sutton Forest in the south, people who are on the front line, many for years, and we don't forget those still campaigning today, particularly in the Pilliga. But his presence on this issue, his tireless energy to get across the state, to meet people, to listen, to inspire, it was a critical ingredient in an incredibly successful public campaign. I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge, on Jeremy's behalf, his staff over the last eight years, Jane Garcia, Jack Goff, Adam Guise, Louise Calloway, and The Rock, who has been with Jeremy since he first decided to run for pre-selection to be a Greens MP, Max Phillips. It has been a pleasure to work with you all. I'm sure Jeremy would have liked to have given this speech and acknowledge your efforts and contribution. It's sad for me that Jeremy isn't able to give his valedictory today. 
In the event he isn't a member, after the next election, the parliament will be less interesting, but more the people of New South Wales will have lost an effective and passionate voice for communities and the environment. Jeremy, mate, I'm confident that history will judge your contribution very well indeed. Ms Kay Fairman.